Hi, I'm Victoria Kahn, and I am the author and illustrator of the okay, Pinkalicious and Peterific books. The type of art that I do is called collage art. Hum cuddly tea now. Who could that be now? Humming a melody. <laughs> could it be who there? Maybe it's Pooh Bear. Pooh? Well, that's me. He's winning the Pooh. Come and find me. He's winning the Pooh. He's in the book. He's winning the Pooh. Your name reminds me. Everyone knows he's winning the Pooh. He's winning the Pooh. I know my friends here. He's winning the Pooh. Come have a look. He's winning the Pooh. The world never ends here. Everyone knows he's winning the Pooh. I'm Victoria Can, and I am the author and illustrator of the Pinkalicious book series, and I'm also co-executive producer of the TV show Pinkalicious and Peterific on PBS Kids. And I'm so happy to be here with you today because I'm going to read a story and then do an art activity, and we are going to read Apples, Apples, Apples. I love apples and they are so good for you. They are really wonderful to eat and I think I eat three a day. I just, I just love them and my daughters could never fall asleep without eating an apple before bedtime. So we are going to read the story. Apples, apples, apples. We were at the Pinkville Orchard. It was apple harvest day. Peter and I found the map of the farm. I read the names of the different apple trees. Pink a wow, I shouted. There's a kind of apple called pink lady. I couldn't believe it, a pink, a perfect apple. I had to find it right away. Have you had any pink lady apples? They are absolutely delicious. They are so yummy. I wonder what your favorite apple is. I like Pink Lady, I also like Macintosh. Peter and I searched through rows and rows of trees. We found red apples, green apples, giant apples, and tiny apples, but no Pink Ladies. Keep looking, Peter, I said. They've got to be here somewhere. Oh, Pinkalicious, Peter called from behind me. Look what I found. I turned and saw my little brother with his arms full of round, rosy apples. Pink ladies for a pink lady, he said. It's fun to go apple picking. Have you gone this year? Peter and I giggled as we put the apples in our wagon. Let's get some more, I said. We ran back and forth until we filled up the wagon. More, asked Peter. More, I answered. By the time Mommy and Daddy found us, our apple pile was an apple pyramid of beautiful pink ladies. Oh dear, Mommy said. What are we going to do with all this fruit, said Daddy. Peter and I looked at each other. We hadn't thought of that. That's a big pile of apples. We rode home very carefully and very slowly. Peter and I kept looking back to make sure the apples didn't fall off the wagon. Oh dear, said Mommy again. Straight ahead of us was a giant hill. Mommy looked at Daddy. Peter looked at me. Uh-oh, I said. Up, up, up we climbed. We pedaled and pushed our way to the top. At long last, we were almost home. I could see all of Pinkville down below. I was so excited to get home that I started pedaling faster. Wait, said Daddy, be careful or the apples will. What do you think's going to happen? Daddy didn't get to finish his sentence. He was interrupted by the sound of rolling apples. The pink ladies fell out of the wagon and went flying down the hill. We tried to catch them, but they were rolling much too fast. In just a few seconds, the streets of Pinkville were covered with fruit. Come on, I yelled. We have to get our apples. Peter and Mommy ran in one direction. Daddy and I ran in another. 
We followed the apples as they tumbled down the street, picking them up one by one. Oh, that's a lot of work, picking up those apples. Just think of it as exercise. You just bend down, pick it up, bend down, pick it up. We searched high and low for our missing pink ladies. Mommy and Peter found a bunch that had rolled into the schoolyard. Mr. Swizzle had some by the front door of his ice cream parlor. I saw three hiding under the rose bushes in Pinkville Park. Look at this. You get lots more than 40 stickers with this book. Isn't that fun? Little by little, we gathered up all the pink ladies and brought them home. Then we washed them and washed them and washed them some more. Some of them were a little bit bruised, but they were still good enough to eat. So we ate them. All week we had apples with every meal. Apple cake and apple crumble, applesauce and apple cider, sliced apples, diced apples, dried apples, fried apples, even apple ice cream. Have you ever had apple ice cream? Hmm, that sounds interesting. I might try making that. By Friday we had eaten nothing but apples and we still had many left. It felt like we were never going to finish. Look at that. I see apple cake and looks like an apple tart and I guess apple ice cream and look at all those sliced apples. Yum. That night I thought about how we had too many apples and not enough people to eat them. And I thought about how my family had looked for the pink ladies all over town. That's when I had an idea. Since we couldn't eat all the apples on our own, maybe we could share them with the rest of Pinkville and call it Apple Appreciation Day. Oh, that sounds like a lovely day. The next day, I brought a shiny fresh apple and a whole apple pie to school and gave them to Miss Penny. Thank you, Pinkalicious, she said. To what do I owe this surprise? It's Apple Appreciation Day, I said. I appreciate you, Miss Penny, so you get an Applelicious treat. Thank you for being the best teacher ever. Well, maybe you have a favorite teacher that you would like to share an apple with. What do you think? My friend Allison was sick, so when I got home, Mommy and I went over to her house with a basket of apples. I'm sorry you're sick, I said. Since an apple a day keeps the doctor away, I hope this keeps you healthy for a long, long time. Allison giggled. <laughs> she bit into an apple. I feel better already, she said. Everywhere we went, we handed out apples and apple treats. Finally, we reached Mr. Swizzle's shop. We gave him a small container of apple ice cream. Mr. Swizzle, you spend all day making sweet treats for everyone in Pinkville, I said. This time, we wanted to make something delicious for you. Happy Apple Appreciation Day. Mr. Swizzle took a bite. This is marvelous. This is excellent. This is positively appalicious, he said. What do you call it? Pink Lady Supreme, I said with a smile. By that evening, we had given away almost all our apples. We only had one left. Looks like Apple Appreciation Day was a huge success, said Mommy and Daddy, giving me a big hug. Then Mommy took the last apple out of the basket. This one's for you, Pinkalicious, she said, as she cut it in half and twisted it open. Inside, there was a star. A pink lady with a star inside, said Daddy. That sounds like someone I know. Thanks for being so generous with the apples and for thinking of other people, said Mommy and Daddy. You are our star. Did you know that there's a star in the middle of an apple? I am going to show you. And have you read all these Pinkalicious books yet? There are a lot. There are over 70 Pinkalicious books. I wonder how many you have read. Okay, are you ready to do a little art and to see the star? Let's, let's start with the star. Let's see. Look at 
like this. I have an apple. Wow, this is so beautiful. Do you see that? There's a star inside every apple. I just love that, that is so beautiful. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to, I have my make things box and inside I have some paint and I'm gonna put some paint on some paper plates and I have paper towels because I get messy and I have some paper and I am going to show you I need my paintbrush. I'm back. All right, so I'm going to show you how. Ah, that was so bad. How we make apple prints. So we put some paint on a plate, and I have pink because I like the color pink. I have a preference for pink. I know you might not have known that, but I do. And then I have some yellow. And I'm gonna scoop that out and put that right here. And so you can take, oh, I need that cutting board again. So you can take an apple and you can cut it exactly in half. Just like this. This is what it looks like if you slice it the other way. And you can put some paint on it. Like this. And you get a piece of paper. And you make a print. So a print is when you press down. I want to get some on the stem. It's when you press down on something. When you print something, you push down on something on a piece of paper. So let's see. Ooh, that's pretty cool. So there's an apple print. So I want to show you, I made a couple earlier so you could see what it looks like. This is what it looks like with printing when you cut the apple in half that way. And this is what it looks like when you print with the star. And this is when you move the apple and you just put the paint on it. And then, this is really fun. This is another thing you can do. You take your apple and you cut triangles, little wedges, and you make the apple into a shape. So, and you just keep cutting wedges. So see my apple? Isn't that an interesting shape? So I'm going to take that. And I'm going to put some paint. on the apple. And then I'm going to make a print of this shape. And you gotta get plenty, plenty of paint on your apple. And then you press down really hard Ooh, 
I even got a little a little seed in there. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Now I want to show you what it, I did one earlier. And I did one, I cut out the shape of the apple and I put it in pink and then I put it in yellow and I printed all over this piece of paper with the apple shape. And look how cool that looks. Look at those pretty colors. You could use any color that you want and you're making a beautiful print and it's abstract and you just have a lot of fun and you go with it. And you, you can see here I've mixed some of the color. When you mix pink and yellow, you get orange. So those are very joyful colors. I think they're really beautiful. I hope you try this at home and I hope you enjoy eating lots and lots of apples and reading stories. And thank you so much for joining me. I, I hope you get to find some pink lady apples and chomp, 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 eat them. Thanks a lot. Don't forget, think pink. Bye-bye. Aqualicious. Written and illustrated by Victoria Can, that's me. That means I wrote the story and I did the drawings. Um, did the artwork and thank you thank you for joining me thank you for making me feel so good and I hope I can make you feel good too I was collecting seashells I found a shell and held it next to my ear so I could listen to the ocean instead of hearing the ocean I heard a little voice inside the shell put me down I'm trying to nap, the voice said. Eek, I screamed. I was scared, but I was also curious. I looked inside the shell. I saw a little face with long hair. Can you help me, said the little voice. Help you? What are you, I asked. I am Aqua, she said shyly, wiggling out of the shell. Hi. My name is Pinkalicious, I said. Oh, I love the color pink, but blue is my favorite color, Aqua said. I am a mermini. What is a mermini, I asked. Merminis are smaller, rarer species of mermaids, said Aqua. Just like there are lots of different kinds of fish, there are many different kinds of mermaids. Merminis only inhabit the sea coast. I'm actually quite well known and I, wow wee, I screamed be excitedly before she could finish. I didn't think mermaids or merminis actually existed. I put Aqua in my bucket so I could show her to my brother, Peter. Peter, look what I found, a mermini mermaid, I said. Peter was burying Mommy and Daddy in the sand while they napped. I dumped the contents of the bucket onto the towel. Say something, Aqua, I commanded. Uh, I was actually speaking to you when you put me in your pail of periwinkles, hermit crabs, and seashells, which I do not appreciate. Hermit crabs bite. I would like to go home now, please. Yes, you do need a home, Peter said. Come on, Pinkalicious, let's build a palace for her. I bet she is a princess. Peter and I immediately got to work. We built a big sandcastle with turrets and decorated it with shells, stones, and feathers. Do you like it, Aqua, I asked. Yes, I do like it. It is lovely, but it isn't my home. I live underwater and I should get back there she said. Of course, but wouldn't you like to have lunch with us first? asked Peter. Hmm, what are you eating? Normally I only eat algae and phytoplankton. Human food would be a real treat, she said. I put Aqua in my water cup and carried her to the concession stand to let her pick out her lunch. I would like one of everything, 
she said. And don't forget the sea salt. Would you like to play miniature golf with us? I asked Aqua after lunch. All you have to do is hit the little ball into the hole, Peter said. I'll help you, but then I really should be going, Aqua said as she hid in the hole on the putting green. Just hit the ball and I will grab it and then you will win. That's cheating. I don't want to play if you can't play fairly, I said, stomping back to the beach. Sorry, Pinkalicious, Aqua said. Perhaps I can teach you to surf. Just balance on this board and ride through the waves like this. Whee! This is fantastic, I said. Uh-oh, Pinkalicious. <coughs> That looks dangerous. I'm going to wake up Mommy and Daddy if you're going to stay in the water, said Peter from the shore. Suddenly, a seagull grabbed Aqua and flew away. Help! Help me, please! Don't let it eat me, Aqua screamed as she dangled from its beak. Peter, the gull is by the lighthouse. We can still save Aqua, I said, running as fast as I could. Hurry before she becomes Mermini Mitzmi, said Peter. Don't worry, Aqua. Peter threw a muscle to the seagull who dropped Aqua into the soft seagrass. Peter picked her up from the ground. We quickly climbed into a little sailboat before the seagull came back for her. You'll be safe here. We will protect you, said Peter. Thank you for saving me. I really appreciate it. But now it's time for me to go home. You humans lead such exhausting lives. <sighs> Sighed Aqua. Okay, Aqua, you can go back home, Peter said as he carefully put Aqua in the water. So long, Aqua. It was nice to meet you, I said, waving goodbye. What? What are you doing? screamed Aqua. No! Help me! There are sharks and eels and horrible crabs in there. This is not my home. Get me out of here. Peter scooped Aqua out of the water and brought her back to our towel. If you don't live in the sea, where do you live? I asked. Over there, said Daddy, who is now awake and pointing to a building on the other side of the sand dune. Aqua is famous. We came to this beach so we could visit the aquarium where Aqua lives. She is a real mermini. We were going to tell you all about her, but I guess we fell asleep, said Mommy. Sometimes I like to sneak out and go to the beach and see what I can discover. It's good to be curious. You never know what you will find and you humans are lots of fun. Now I need to get back home to my tank before anyone notices that I am gone. Will you take me? asked Aqua. Inside the aquarium, Aqua swam in her tank. There was a crowd of people who clapped and cheered for her. She was famous. As she swam by on her seahorse, she waved to us. I whispered, Thank you, Aqua. You are beautiful. Afterward, we got blueberry and sea swirl ice cream. Today was truly Aqualicious, I said. Who knew 
that collecting seashells could be so much fun. The end. Now I just want to tell you that you can go to thinkpinkalicious.com and you can download, there are all sorts of um, coloring pages. Hold on. Here's one. <laughs> it's, um, here's one you can do. You can draw your own book cover for what you think Aqualicious could look like. And then here are all sorts of activities that, that you, can, you can do that are really, really fun. Here's one that's really great. And it's, um, you can pass out a sheet of paper and everybody in your family or everybody at home can uh, write or draw what makes a good friend. Because this story is really about the friendship between Aqua and Peter and Pinkalicious. And what makes a friend special? Why do you like your friends? What, what makes them really um, a good friend? And what, why are you grateful for them? Another thing you can do is you can take out a piece of paper and you can do a drawing of things that you like to do on the beach. Do you like to swim? Do you like to build sand castles? Do you like to surf? Do you like to dig a hole? Do you like to fill a bucket with sand? What are the things that you like to do at the beach? So there are lots of great ideas for activities to do um, now that you've heard the story. And I hope you have a lot of fun and I really thank you for joining me. And don't forget to think pink. Pink is the color of love. And I love being here with you. Now's the time to close the book. Though we've just begun, it's true. We'll say goodbye until another day. Another, another day with new adventures on the way. They're on the way. We're on our way. So off we go. We won't be far. We'll be waiting here for you. With hills to run and higher trees to climb. And someone there to catch you. It's goodbye for now To all of you We'll meet again when you all come Into the book of goodbye for now To all of you From here among all the best of Friends, here where the story never ends. Back in the hundred Mom, I'm home. Here in the book of